Welcome to the Mindset School Podcast. My name is Inga Pakalinskita. I'm a life coach, neuroscience geek, and entrepreneur. In each week, I will bring you an inspiring topic, easy to use tools to help you become the best version of yourself so you can create the life that is beyond your wildest dreams. Let's get started. Roberta Fusco is a nutrition therapist, women's health expert, and speaker who helps women fix their period problems and love their cycles. By educating and sharing her own journey of recovering health, she seeks to empower women to take control of their own health, find inner balance, and discover their full potential. In today's episode, we chat about her story and how she got to where she is today, how she overcame a polycystic ovarian syndrome by taking charge of her own health, how addressing her health has increased self-confidence, productivity, and overall happiness. We chat about the mindset shifts that help her to make this transformation and so much more. Before we begin, I wanted to share a free audio guide I created for you. If lately you've been feeling stuck, unmotivated, and have low energy, this audio guide, How to Get Unstuck, will give you three simple strategies to generate clarity, regain direction, and feel energized. Simply visit ingapakalnishkite.com or click the link in the show notes. All right, let's jump straight into the episode. Roberta, thank you so much for joining me in today's episode. Oh, thank you for having me, Inga. I'm so excited. I am super excited about this episode, and I wanted to give a little bit overview of how Roberta and I got connected or how we actually know each other. So Mm -hmm. uh, about 10 years ago, I lived in Napoli in Italy. And so we met at just a friends gathering in what is it called? Napoli. Uh, it was, yeah, like in, in the piazza Cent- where we all yeah. meet. Yeah. Centro Storico. Centro Storico, that's it. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So we got connected there. Um, I really felt uh, a good connection with Roberta. And Then I moved on to living in Ibiza, moving to London, and then moving to Italy back again and coming back to London. So we stayed in touch uh, over the years through Facebook. And just a couple months ago or a couple weeks ago, uh, we got connected again on Facebook and we started talking about, oh, do you, where do you live? Are you in London? Yes, I'm in London. What do you do? And then I learned that Roberta is actually a nutritional therapist. And I was like, wow, that is really, really interesting. And uh, a couple weeks went by and this idea came to me that I should have you on my podcast because once I learned from you what transformation you made in your own health and now you help other women to do the same, I was like, okay, this person needs to be on my podcast. <laughs> so thank you so much for being here. And thank you for reconnecting because, um, yeah, you shared a message about your podcast and I listened to it and thought, wow, yeah, we really need to meet up again and just, yeah, reconnect over this because there is a lot we can tell each other. Yes, most definitely. So for our listeners, tell us a little bit about your story. So where the struggle started in your health and how it led you to what you do today. I would love to share that. So funny enough, when we met, life was good and I was still probably 20 or 19. And I would say my health transformation really started right after that. However, just to give a bit of context, when I was 15, I was diagnosed with something called polycystic ovary syndrome, which basically is, at the time, I didn't know much about it. I just thought it was just cysts on your ovaries. Um, 
actually is a chronic inflammatory condition. So this basically means uh, what a list, that's what I was told at the time, that it's a chronic condition, you'll have it forever, it will affect your hormones and most likely your fertility. But being young, I didn't really give it that much attention and just followed my doctor's advice. So at the time I had surgery to remove some of the biggest cysts that I had. And then I took the pill. I took the contraceptive pill for nearly 10 years. And I would say the, <laughs> the mess really started or manifested itself when I moved to London. And that was in 2012 because obviously my lifestyle changed and we all know of the hectic lifestyle that you live in London, sleeping less, eating out all the time, not really having a sleep routine anymore uh, or just you know a self-care routine, um, not exercising, just being focused on career, you know, making it in the corporate chain and just getting the job and all of that in a nutshell, just got me burnt out in, in about one year. Mm. So I would say that's when the transformation started. I would say it's been retrospectively once I left London, mm. because at the time I, I knew there was something wrong and my body was telling me in so many different ways, but the most obvious ways were probably the ones related to my mental health mm. rather than my hormones obviously is related to hormones as well but um you know symptoms such as you know depression and crying all the time feeling sad all the time like really feeling exhausted and tired fatigued mm. that was for me you know like the the wake up call and like the red flag that got me to you know stop and be like okay something needs to change mm-hmm so I would say that was the, the start of looking into different alternatives. So mm -hmm. obviously the pill didn't work for me. You know, I still had the same symptoms, although mildly, yeah, although much more mild <laughs> than they were before, mm -hmm. but they were still there. Like the symptoms were still there. I was still struggling with my digestion um, and again, struggling mentally to, you know, just I had zero resilience, like looking back. Mm -hmm. so I started looking into health also I had to wait on so mm -hmm. one thing that like the first thing that came to me was I want to lose a few kilos and start feeling better in my own body mm -hmm. so it really started off like that mm -hmm. and then I realized that there's so much more beyond eating well than just losing weight and that had a ripple effect on literally everything else in my life and uh, step by step, I got into uh, mindfulness. I got into actually understanding the nutritional science behind eating well and how that can affect your mental health and your hormones. And that got me to go back to study and to become a nutritional therapist a few years ago, uh, back in London in the meantime, mm -hmm. and really, um, really with a different mindset. So I would say all of these things together got me to do the work that I do today, which is helping women understanding their own hormonal challenges and addressing them in holistic ways. They're not just nutrition related, but lifestyle related. And, you know, mindset has a massive, is a massive component of this holistic change. Mm -hmm. And I'm interested to hear from you where, where was the moment that you felt I need to take control of my own health what was happening for you at that time i remember clearly where that was it was in a single room somewhere in north london uh, where i was struggling to pay rent and do my unpaid intern internship at the same time i was doing another part-time job and i remember feeling so sad like feeling so tired couldn't get out of bed and like this deep feeling of sadness, like mm. even though I was being so active and so radiant from the outside, internally I knew there was something wrong. Like I knew that my body wasn't functioning as it should for a 20 something year old. Um, and I think that was the wake up moment for me, like the moment where I said, I recognize this is not right mm -hmm. and something needs to change from, from a deeper level. 
and mm-hmm. another job is not going to do it. It has to be mm-hmm. something bigger than that. And that's where you started looking for answers. Well, how do I feed myself and getting into mindfulness and, and which then led you into actually going back to studies and, and learning professionally. Well, how do I help myself mm-hmm. and how do I then help other women? That's correct. But if I had to put it on a timeline, I would say from the moment I realized something was wrong with me until I actually realized how much of a change all these lifestyle changes had on me, it's probably taken a couple of years. So I remember this moment where I was very sad and then I decided to go back home where I knew at least I could get the love and affection of my family. And from there, I remember feeling stuck, like completely stuck. And I remember reading this book and that was when I then decided to move to Australia. So from the moment I moved to Australia to when I went back to study, it was probably about two years. Yeah, it was about probably two years after. So it's definitely a journey. What I always say to people, there is like this conception that people into health or in the well-being space have it all sorted. Mm. And it's not, it's just, you need that knowledge as a life investment. Like, you know, these things as, you know, your Bible for a lifetime. You you just learn how to listen to your body and to recognize the signs. You will always get into trouble with your health. It's, you know, it's a lifelong journey. Like you always will get something at some point, like a traumatic event or, you know, uh, something that really, really saddens you or, angers you or you know whatever or an accident you know so there's so many things that can happen to your health it's just knowing and recognizing when to take action i think that is so important what you just said because i remember in my own life i have had some health issues but now when i look back every time that happened was when actually I was ignoring my own body. I was ignoring the signals that it was sending to me, like what you said, exhaustion, depression, uh, struggling with all of that and and just really, oh, I'm going to push it more. I'm going to push more. I'm going to do more. It's going to be fine. And then one day you feel burned out. That's it. Yeah, definitely. Looking back in hindsight, what mindset shift has led you into taking control of your own health and what mental stories you had to let go of? Hmm. That's a very good one. So in terms of what mindset shift, I would say the biggie. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if I had to pick like the first thing, the first principle behind you know, this transformation was taking responsibility for my health and stop being a victim of the circumstances. So I see that a lot in, you know, the Picos community. There is loads of support groups and there are support groups for everything nowadays, which is awesome because you really can connect with people that are experiencing your same struggles and it's great. But what I see all the time, there is this narrative of being a victim. And being like, you know, I'm really struggling with this. I'm never going to get better. Um, You know, it's a chronic condition. I've been given this curse for life. And although I sympathize with that, because it is not easy to, you know, go through these things and you need to create a good support system around you to be able to, to make any change, I believe. I think the biggest thing is to actually take ownership of your health and, from a mindset perspective, take responsibility of your health and be like, that's it. I'm done being a victim. And in terms of the narrative, this is even more exacerbated by the fact that we listen to our doctors as this sort of prophets that knows everything. So I had to stop thinking and believing that my doctor knew everything. He's the only person with the power. And the moment I changed that, and empowered myself to actually research and learn more about what could I do with nutrition? What could I do with exercise? What could I do with mindfulness? That's when everything changed. I believe that, you know, doctors are doing a really great job, uh, but 
the health is not only a symptom that is treated with a pill. It's a combination. It's as a holistic approach of how you eat, how you sleep, what is the state of your mental health, of your social interactions with other people. Everything is massively important. And they are doing a great job. But I think as well, the way the system is built, they don't actually have that much time to sit down with you and to ask all of those important questions so they could help you to make that transformation. And, you know, I'm so glad that you have made those mindset shifts in your own life and made that transformation in your own health. And now you teach other women to do the same so they can become symptom free and really Mm -hmm. be vibrant and productive and just enjoy life and be more happy. Yeah. And also it's, I would say you need to stop seeing it as something you must do to get better because that is the wrong way of seeing it. Like let's take as an example, weight loss. I think the moment you stop seeing it as I must do this because I want to look better, it doesn't work. I don't think it works like that. I think you need to find meaning behind that that is bigger than just the way you look at yourself. It has to be for example, I want to be the most active and, you know, happy and lively person that I can be for my children or for my partner or, you know, for my family. So I think the moment you give it meaning that is deeper than just how you look, it could be that for some people and that could be motivating enough to, to make that change. But for some other people, it might just be finding that motivation in the impact that change is going to have on your community, your family, your, you know, husband, whatever that is. And if someone finds themselves struggling with their own health, what are the three mindset shifts they have to make to begin that transformation? So in terms of mindset, again, I would say very big one, stop seeing yourself as a victim and take action, like take responsibility, start researching alternatives like alternative therapies that might be helping your specific condition or uh, you know there's so much out there and we're so lucky to live in the you know information era so i would say you know youtube is massive podcast is massive like you can find the same content that i could be sharing um with my clients or with any other doctor in the world probably in a podcast or in a on a youtube channel so it's really down to you to start researching in first person and start experimenting the other thing i would say is pushback i hear all the time is that oh eating organic food is expensive oh uh, having a personal trainer is expensive or whatever that could be your you know your pushback and i say I say this, like see this transformation as a life investment, the same way you save money every month into your pension fund or uh, into your saving account. It's exactly the same, like see it as a long-term investment because it's going to return back to you. It's going to return back to you in vitality, in again, like happiness, in concentration, focus, performance. It's going to give you so much more than just fixing that symptom. It's going to have a massive effect on so many other levels of your life. So see it as an investment and not just as something you must do, but something you decide to do to make your life better. You are a nutritional therapist and women's health expert. What inspired you to do the work that you do today? Well, in a way, my my own story and my own struggles Uh, But I would say, again, like looking at those communities of people that I have been in touch with and that I had been around and obviously all the women in my life, you know, my best friends, my teachers, whoever, like all the the women I had contact with that somehow struggle with their hormones. And I think it fundamentally comes down to the fact that we are not taught about our femininity and our human body since a young age. Oh, I personally didn't know many things until I studied anatomy and, you know, the human body, really. There's so much I didn't know about 
the vagina and you know how we ovulate and how to recognize that and cycle tracking and all the signs that we can recognize in our own body and how to use that at our advantage how can we use our hormones at our advantage to you know schedule that meeting or that pitching session and when is a good time for us to rest and just relax and not push into the masculine side of us that that wants to achieve just engage into the mindful feminine side and just embrace life and uh, nature the work that i do as well, it's focusing on the mindset. And I am always so surprised that we don't know how our own mind works, or in the same way, we don't actually know how our body works. Mm -hmm. What do we need to feed to ourselves? So I think once we learn that, then that's what I see as well from my clients and people that I work with, once they understand, they have the knowledge of how things work, you have so much power and the transition is so much easier to make because you have more patience and you know how things work, all the nuts and bolts. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm totally on the same page with you that learning about our own bodies, how everything works is truly, mm -hmm. truly important and absolutely necessary. Your holistic approach includes not only main principles of eating for hormone balance, but also improving sleep, tracking cycles, and including new healthy habits. From your own experience and results your clients have achieved, what impacts habits play when treating either this condition or any other condition? Well, again, is massive. And when it comes to habits, I think you see a lot of these fad diets or 30 days challenges. And I think that's great. Like it's a great way to challenge yourself and to get into a new habit. But how do you actually sustain that? How do you make that a lifetime change and a lifetime habit? And yes, I completely agree. Like I think holistically you need to make new habits and changes in all areas of your life. However, if you've never done any of these, I would definitely recommend to start with one thing at a time. So for example, it could be setting a specific sleep routine. So you can have a, what I call a sleep curfew. So 10 p.m., I know that's when, that's the absolute end of the day, like no matter what day of the week it is. Obviously, I can be a bit more flexible if the day after I'm not working, but honestly, I can't remember the last time I went to bed at like 2 a.m. And that's simply because that's how, you know, I know that my body performs better in that state. But for anyone who's going from, you know, making that change, just perhaps change it by half an hour. And, you know, the, the month after you can do an hour. And, you know, same thing with exercise. Start by doing it little by little. And same thing with foods. Perhaps start with dropping one thing out of your diet and substituting it with one other thing, uh, perhaps stop eating processed sugars and include at the same time still eat fruit. And then for another month, you reduce your amount of fruit and you reduce your amount of simple carbohydrates. So for example, bread or pizza or pasta. So it's gradual changes. And I also think you need to make sure you have the good, a good support system around you which you might agree with from a... Yeah, definitely. Mindset. And in this scenario, what would you say what a good support system would look like? I would definitely say if you decide to do a challenge, for example, uh, to have a sort of buddy that you can share it with or you know, someone that will hold you accountable for your changes. So this could be a coach, it could be your partner, it could be your best friend, it could be your family but make it public. So make it, let them know that you're going to make this change and they will need to hold you accountable. If they really love you, they need to make you, you know, they need to make you feel bad if you don't do it. <laughs> so I think that's what I mean by support system. But also, for example, if you're going to plan to be doing uh, meditation every morning or yoga every morning you want to have the equipment you want to have the space to do that so you want to have the best conditions around you 
to do that every day. So you don't want to end up, you know, without a yoga mat. And again, it's a, it's a very simple, you know, example that I'm giving. But if you're going to do a 30 day juice fast, you don't want to end up without a juicing machine or like a juicer. So you do want to have the right equipment to make the right changes. So preparation, setting yourself for success. If you're planning to meditate or do yoga, make sure that probably in the, in the evening, the night before, you lay your math in the room and you set the scene. So the next morning when you get up, all you have to do is just sit on that math and start. Exactly. You said it beautifully. <laughs> <laughs> and I would say another thing that, you know, you need to start to recognize when you're about to sabotage yourself. So mm -hmm. for example, if you know that around your, let's say the week before your periods, you have created them, the story in your head that poor me, I need to eat chocolate. Okay. Let's say this is the story you've created, but then in your 30 days challenge, you said you're not going to eat chocolate. So you need to prepare yourself to know that at some point in your cycle, your body and your mind's going to try to sabotage you and to tell you, oh, actually, you know, you're about to get your period. It's okay if you eat chocolate. So kind of anticipate those uh, triggers and recognize when your body is going to do that and call yourself out call yourself out on those things and be like, nope, I said I would stick to this. I said I would do it for 30 days. It doesn't matter what time of the month it is. I'm sticking with it because if I don't do it, my support system will make me suffer for it in some way. It can be, you know, a silly way, but like um, one thing I've done previously to, um, so I was doing a plank challenge for a month and I hate plank. I hate it. So that, that's why I decided to do it. <laughs> and I told my boyfriend, if I don't do it, I'll have to give 5,000 pounds in charity. Like you hold me accountable for that. And as good as it, as it is, because it's still a charitable cause, you know, 5,000 pounds is quite a lot of money. So, so he reminded me every day, did you do your challenge? I was like, yes. And sometimes I forgot, like there have been days where you, you know, just mm -hmm. forgot. And I got up from bed before going to bed, like already in bed at 10 p.m. I was like, no, damn, I have to do it. So I would do it and then go back to sleep. And I think it's so important what you said, because this is a habit. Whenever we want to do something new. So this is, you know, you decided to do a 30 day plank challenge, obviously, you haven't done a 30 day plank challenge before. So your mind doesn't have that habit in, in yep. the brain installed. So that's why you end up forgetting. And that's why you need those accountability buddies to tell mm -hmm. you, Hey, have you been good today? Have you not ate chocolate? So that's, <laughs> that's, that's really, really important. And uh, tell us more about how taking control of your own health can help increase productivity, self-confidence, and overall happiness? And what areas of your life has been most transformed since you recovered your health? That's a very good question. So from, if we're talking purely from a chemistry point of view, I mean, there is a lot of research on how things such as your environment and certain foods that you eat can really impact certain neurotransmitters. And I know you're nodding and I know you love neuroscience and you would totally agree with this. So from a scientific point of view, there is evidence to show that things such as omega-3s or a diet low in sugar and processed foods is actually a diet, um, is actually linked to low inflammation and low chronic inflammation. So obviously, the lower the inflammation in your body in some other ways, the more productive and the more focused you can be. There's a lot of new research, for example, on things such as fats as well. So how actually people can thrive on a high fat and low carbohydrate diet, you know, AKA a keto diet or, um, you know, different kind of uh, diets where basically you're not burning off sugars but you you're basically your your main source of fuel is fats 
So that's also a very interesting concept when it comes to focus and productivity. Personally, it hasn't worked for me, but mm-hmm. I know it does work for a lot of people, particularly from an endurance perspective and, you know, like a sports perspective. So if you lift weights and you do uh, very hard trainings, those kind of diets can really work. But going back to your question of which area has been massively impacted by my changes, I would say if I had to pick one thing would be my self-confidence. So I remember growing up being this, actually as a teenager, I was okay. But then I think growing up, something must have happened and my confidence was so low. I still remember the first, the day of my graduation back in Italy and it was a total mess like I remember crying after because I was so unhappy of how unsatisfied I was of expressing my thesis you know in Italy you have to do this Mm -hmm. thing where you talk in front of a room of 100 people and I hated every minute of it and I remember thinking I never want to be doing public speaking again and there she is (laughs) (laughs) this whole uh, process has made me so much more resilient and I would say, I would say my brain started working better since I've, I've started eating better. And I've, you know, in, again, these are the things you can see retrospectively. I think eating better, it really helps your mental health and that helps you building resilience and making new habits. I think it's all definitely connected. It's all intertwined and, and massively connected. What would you say were the three biggest mindset shifts that made a huge impact in your life and health? So I'll say it one more time. Mm -hmm. It's one of my favorite things is take responsibility of your health. So stop seeing yourself as victim of the circumstances, change the story you have created into facts. So what are the facts? I have this thing. Okay, I'll deal with it. So that's mass, like the first thing I would say in, in shifting uh, your mentality. The second thing I would say is to charge, power charge that anger, that frustration, like that negative feeling that you have and transform it into motivation. So for example, one of the main things for me was this frustration because I felt that the medical system failed me. It was, and again, you, you, um, I completely agree with what you were saying that it's, you know, the system doesn't work and it's not, um, it's not that doctors don't know how to do their job. I, you know, I trust doctors have the best intentions. However, they clearly don't have time to dedicate to patients and to educate patients on different things and probably themselves as well. So the thing that, that I had was anger. Like I, had, I was very angry and frustrated because I remember thinking, why did they not tell me this? Why did they not tell me that eating a lot of sugar is actually connected to extra growth in the body and an estrogen dominance in the body? Like this is simple. Why did no one tell me? So that, that fueled my will to share this, share this with other women. And it motivated me to you know, change my career and go back to study. So Mm -hmm. it's powerful. I think negative emotions can be very powerful. When twisted in in a different angle and just Mm -hmm. turned onto that frustration turn, like for you, educating other women, sharing your story and really helping them to understand how to feed themselves so they can balance the hormones. Absolutely. And the other thing, but probably the last mindset shift I would mention is to, um, I'm, I'm not sure if I could say this is a shift, but just see your mind as in a kind way. I like to say, be kind to your mind, mm. because although it's good to push yourself and do all these challenges and, you know, like be active, I think this is in our modern society is very much rewarded, like being productive and being active all the time. But it's also very good to take time every single day to just be like, just be still and just reflect and, you know, set an intention for the day. So just take time to 
actually stop before starting your day or it can be at the end of your day i love doing meditation work in the morning um, but just definitely taking time to be kind to yourself and to your mind 100 percent agreed so roberta what's next for you what are you working towards so one thing that has been in my mind for a while actually since the lockdown happened um, is that I want to do more and more work with uh, in women's circles. So I believe there is some powerful energy that comes out of women coming together. And I really want to facilitate those kind of circles where women come together. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not just an educational circle where we talk about menstruation and your body and ovaries and all of that it's more also a safe space for women to be vulnerable and share their own experiences. So that's definitely something I'm working on currently. I'm about to launch my group coaching as well, which is starting in July. And by the way, I'll be more than happy to offer 15% off for your listeners. And it's a four week course on how to, how to learn how to eat for your hormones. How can you make those changes? And every week there's going to be a new piece of information and there's going to be a group chat where we can all connect and share our stories. So if some of our listeners would like to join the coaching program and get the 15% off, how would they do that? Awesome. So you can send me an email at Robbie. R-O-B-I at ibelieveinginger.com and make sure to put Mindset15 in the title of the email. So that will qualify you to, to get 15% off my one-to-one program as well as my coaching program. Perfect. Amazing. And if our listeners would like to connect with you, where can they find you? I would say the best, I would say the most responsive um, and best way to connect with me is on Instagram. I've also recently launched a YouTube channel. So that's where you can find most of my video content, uh, which is I Believe in Ginger by Roberta on YouTube. And I Believe in Ginger on, on Instagram, where you can join the challenges and direct message me. I'm very responsive on that platform. And if they wanted to learn more about your coaching programs, where can they go? Still on my website, I believe in ginger.com. Uh, there is a tab that says services. And under that, there is all the information on my one-to-one, uh, three-month or six-month programs and my 30-day online coaching program starting in July. Roberta, I have learned so much from you about the mindset that really helped you to transform your own health and become a leader in this field, helping other women to, to do the same. I hope our listeners are going to enjoy this episode and I am so, so happy to have you here and I cannot wait to see you in person. Me too. I so look forward to that moment and thank you again for having me, Inga. If you loved this episode, please subscribe, leave a review and share it with your friends. If you are a social creature, Take a screenshot of this podcast, include one insight you learned from this episode and tag me at Inga Pakal. I cannot wait to see your insights. Also, you might want to check out my free audio guide, How to Get Unstuck, which also includes a workbook. You'll learn three simple strategies to generate clarity, regain direction, and feel energized. Simply visit ingapakelnishkite.com or click the link in the show notes. Once again, thank you so much for listening and I'll speak to you next week. Bye now.